mentioned it there, along with the pal pad too. So uh, we're going to need to see the rest of those Colrus pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> over half the supporters in the prize cards for Jake this game one might prove a little bit worrisome, especially with the disruption from Christian's side of things. It does look like Christian's going to start things off for us, though, and Ryko will be in the active spot. You have that Flaffy down. Can you Marie. <laughs> right <laughs> eventually, away. Eventually a Flaffy. Well, fleet-footed to start things off there, but no Maridon just yet. So for a Sealstone, could open up that avenue if you want to get those Pokemon down, and might as well take a look. It's so awkward, though, if you don't have a supporter for next turn. Go ahead and search for that Maridon EX, and with its tandem unit, we'll be able to search out a couple more electric Pokemon, put them on your bench. And I did see the electric generator in hand for Christian. Yep, you get to accelerate those energies. Uh, if the hand wasn't too strong, maybe you could see a uh, Pokemon like that Squawkabilly targeted here, but looks like the Maridon searching out some friends would be a nice answer, and doing that with the Ultra Ball as well, get some of those lightning energies into the discard pile to help out with that Flappy later on. Ultra Ball does discard both of those lightning energies. And there is that Maridon EX. Really a powerful EX Pokemon uh, ever since it was released, and kind of just a glass cannon, though, for the deck in general. Yep, you're dealing with some low hit points, but of course, searching out all of these Pokemon means that you will get to the point that you're trying to. You have that early setup that you have, search out all these Pokemon. Looks similar to what uh, you're just trying to do with Inteleon VMAX. If you have all your Pokemon in play, at least you can make your strategy work. But at this point now, <laughs> where's the supporter? <laughs> because if you do not uh, make a hand of this afterwards, it's going to be uh, an upward climb. And we see Zeraora and Raichu V, the cards chosen for Christian here, off that tandem unit. A little bit of awkward choices. Yeah, it's, it's not exactly what you're looking for in this situation. You, you do have the free retreat of the Zeraora that you can use if you're in some situations with that escape rope that you often see against Lost Box players. But Raichu is uh, an interesting choice. It means that you maybe have the potential to work this Pokemon in against an early Dragonite or uh, opposing Raikou, but ultimately losing energies early on doesn't feel the greatest. Discarding two against a Sableye? Well, here is the first electric generator of the game. Such a powerful item card for Ooh. this Lightning deck and finding two Lightning off the top. Now, with finding both of those, you can attach them to any of your bench Lightning Pokemon in any way you like. Well... Once again, interested. <laughs> As we see two <laughs> energies to the Maridon, one to the Raichu. There's no attacker ready to go for next turn just yet. The escape rope. Oh, this out. is okay, why that's, we're getting that the Raichu. That makes more sense. <laughs> Fast charge. If you go first, you can use this attack during your first turn. Search your deck for a lightning energy and attach it to this Pokemon. No chance of Vic getting knocked out, potentially. It would be really cool if Jake was able to do that. <laughs> Especially no come face start. Yeah, that's uh, a lot to ask. But I mean, this does thin out an energy, so there's potential to draw into a little bit uh, better of a setup on the next turn. But you've got some attacks lined up, so not the worst opening here from Christian. Meanwhile, Jake has that battle VIP pass, one of the most oppressive item cards in Pokemon history, honestly. When you see that on the other side of the table, you, you worry. <laughs> you know your opponent is going to get set up. It leads to so many of these ridiculous openers that we look out for. And, I mean, Jake is going to see plenty of cards on this opening turn, especially if he can run into one of those three remaining Colrus experiment. Switch cart will get that Comfey to the active spot so you can use flower selecting. You also have access to concealed cards with that water energy in hand. There was no path to the peak from Christian's side of things. Ooh, that's tricky. See the battle VIP pass along with the Raikou V. So often you are going to see plenty of Pokemon on the other side uh, on the bench so that you're easily going to get a two prize knockout with this Pokemon. But is it worth losing this early so that you can find some additional Comfey? I think the answer is no. Battle VIP pass going the Lost Zone here. Jake really prioritizing that Raikou V. 
It does allow you to have access to four seal stone now, if it is found. Yeah, and that's why I like to see the nest ball used here. Go ahead and search this Pokemon out of the deck. Give yourself a little more of an opportunity to draw into the right cards here, especially if you have to use that Radiant for Ninja. And there is the retreat, discarding the water energy off the active. Get a second chance at flower selecting here, finding the escape rope switch oh, card. Oh, I was going to say, yep, that's that feels so much worse when you see the switching effects and you threw away the energy. I understand uh, considering using the energy first, and then maybe if you draw into more energy, there's that option there to, to use the Radiant Greninja. Sometimes the odds tell you that's the better play, but it hurts when you see that. That is not the kind of first turn that Jake has been wanting to see here in this win and end to day two. Now Christian's starting things off for the second turn with another tandem unit here. It's not just a one and done type of ability. You can use it every turn if you want. Well, not anymore. <laughs> There's too many Pokemon to play, but <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah, we see a second Raichu. Look at that. Just going to focus on working this Pokemon into the mix and trying to get some additional prize cards left and right. And Iono is going to be the selection after not seeing a Colrus. That, yeah, it is. Well, you only what two cards in hand. So <laughs> it <laughs> might as well. It is. It's a debate that we often see uh, from players. Is I don't have anything, but neither does my opponent. They'll only have one more Comfey to try to bail themselves out of this situation. Sometimes it might be worth holding on to, but looks like Christian is going to find some pretty relevant help here in that Ultra Ball. Maybe search out that Flappy. Along with what is two Bravery Charm in hand? which is the two in the list, but it's such a powerful tool card, especially in a matchup like this where every damage counter matters for your opponent with that Sableye and Lost Mine. Yep. Of course, there are a few Lost Vacuum to look out for. Three on the other side from Jake, but you don't always want to use those on your opponent's side of the field. If you remove your own, then you're increasing uh, the count in your Lost Zone. So interesting to look at how that works. And also, there's Bravery Charm on the other side from Jake. Pretty brave of both players. <laughs> Does add 50 HP to the basic Pokemon it is attached to, so that Raichu V now has 250 HP. And we see a Dynamotor from the Flappy that was found off the Ultra Ball. So overall, pretty good second turn off that Iono from Christian here. Does have the knockout, but is going to have to give up two energy to do it with this Raichu. Right, and this, this is where it doesn't feel as strong if, if you do eventually get to attack with the, the Raikou in situations like this, hold on to the energies, then uh, it's nice. But, I mean, as long as you're not under any pressure, you're going to have the access to continually bring these energies back with Flappy. And then had the attachment for turn attached it to the Flappy, He's going to discard an energy off the Maridon EX and that one from Flaffy to take the knockout. But this is not sustainable. It's, it definitely can be an issue, especially if we see a Pokemon like this Raichu knocked out in a situation like this. If the cards eventually fall in Jake's favor. And oh, no. <laughs> That's not what you want to see. That, is, that, that card does not go into the hand anymore. It is... A tool card, no longer an item, that Forest Seal Stone heading to the discard along with that water, but Mirage Gate added to the hand. Jake still needs to find a Colrus here. And wow, all right, does find it, gets rid of the Super Rod that's going to hurt a little, but Colrus's Experiment, it's the name of the game for this deck, really. Yeah, you need this card in order to survive. You see three cards in the Lost Zone, that's going to be five now. Nice to see cards like that Manaphy. You're not going to need to hold on to that, so... Uh, some easy decisions there, and hopefully we can find some help. Problem is, where are the basic Pokemon? Not in hand. You gotta find them. Concealed cards, discards the psychic energy that was found. Draw a couple more. There's that four seal stone, but the Raikou was pushed to the bottom of the deck with that Iono. I need to be more specific. <laughs> Not <laughs> Sableye. <laughs> That is not good. And that's one thing that this deck kind of has trouble with as the game goes on. If you don't find a lot of basic Pokemon turn one with that Battle VIP pass, it really puts uh, importance on Nest Ball for the rest of the game. Well, 
there's not very much you can do in a situation like this. Through potentially with the loss vacuum, you can get up to seven cards into the loss zone. And look for an attacker. Do you have the energies to potentially work in the Radiant Greninja in this state? I think so. Looks like it. All right, that's a little better. And we do have the retreat as well. Moonlight Shuriken is enough to take down that Flaffy on the bench with just 90 HP. That would stop the recycling of energies for this Raichu V later on. And there's that Super Odd guaranteeing those energies in the deck. And then there is that Mirage Gate. Just fetch him right away. Two energies now on that Radiant Greninja. One more from hand, and then a simple switch effect will allow Jake to finally get things going with an attack here. Hopefully next turn we'll see just lost mine, lost mine, lost mine. All right, and that's, that's what you're hoping for at this point. We know that there's so many supporters in the prize cards here, so using that Radiant Greninja is going to be great help to at least remove that Flaffy from play, stop all of the energy acceleration from the discard pile, maybe slow down your opponent to a point where they have to attack with a Pokemon that can actually lose the energies for good. Knockout taken on the Flaffy. 90 damage on that Raichu V now. So with that Bravery Charm, has 160 left. All right. He drew from the top. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, Kyle. It's fine. It's Ooh. fine. I disagree. <laughs> Well, this is going to be an uphill climb for, for Jake. We see, obviously, getting that attack off was helpful, but one Comfe, and still no Colrus available. Christian's going to continue to put on more pressure with this Raichu, take an additional prize card, but has the, the Marie, but this is a, a turn where if you do see that Sableye uh, get to work in the Lost Mine, the energy acceleration's right off the table once more. Wow, all right, boss's orders, the okay. last card in hand. Ops to bring up the Comfey, changes his mind. Sableye now is the choice. And Jake says, thank you very much, <laughs> because I only had one Comfey, <laughs> and I have another Sableye in hand. But, of course, Sableye certainly does look like a big risk here. And honestly, Jake's hand is just insane now. You have... Access to Flower Selecting. There's also the Mirage Gate in hand to go along with it. You have Switching Cart. You have Pal Pad to shuffle in all of your coal. Oh, <laughs> there's one. <laughs> Pokestop's going to discard another one, right? That would be Clutch Sequencing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. How about discard a Pokemon and an Energy and then Super Autumn back? That technically works as well. <laughs> all right, cool. That would be the third Super Rod of the game for Jake here, which is all that's available. I guess there may be a, there may have been some merit to using the Super Rod, uh, putting a Comfey back into the deck, and then using Flower Selecting there. You have potential to draw into that one, and then use one of these many switching effects in hand to, to help get out of this situation and maybe get one step closer to that Colrus. Well, that decision was a pretty quick one for Jake once he realized uh, Ryko V knocks out pretty much everything on Christian's side of the board right now. And, and there's a Forest Seal Stone as well. That, so That means Colrus' experiment. That's combos right there. We love to see that. I think that also reaches 10 in the Lost Zone with the Colrus' experiment. There is that Star Alchemy. That ability from the Forest Seal Stone gives it to one of your Pokemon V. Search your deck for any card. Put it in your hand. A mini Star Birth. Well, Jeremy, in this situation, of course, you see the Raichu with the energies already lined up, ready to go. You could work in the knockout on this Pokemon. Are you threatened by that Mareep, or do we want to remove these two energies from play? I like removing the energies from play, uh, especially with the way Christian has played this game. It's very off the top of the deck. Uh, no cards in hand to really help support the future turns. And yeah, Jake senses that. Uh, I'm going to charge up this Raikou and get a clean lightning rondo. Yeah, lines up fairly well when you see your opponent has one card in hand. He's been trying to 
establish something, as we've just seen energies discarded left and right trying to take knockouts on Pokemon, but that just leaves no energies in play. You get in situations like this where you're going to be completely reliant on that Mareep to evolve, get some acceleration, or find those electric generators, and you've got no way to really start to look for those other than your opponent's Pokestop? We could try. Spin the wheel. Spin the stop. It's a wheel. I don't know if you've seen wheels <laughs> lately. Have they evolved <laughs> since I went to school? <laughs> Ten in the loss zone now for Jake. There's the concealed cards to go along with everything else that's been going on in this turn so far. I believe the switch cart is in hand, so you can choose to switch cart the Comfey, bring up the Raikou, and take the knockout. Could also escape rope, but I'm pretty sure you're just going to be eating a Zerora. Or a I want to knock out the active. Let's see, Jake trying to do some math here. Let's see if this is going to be enough for the knockout with the Raikou V. Also can include that fleet footed. Get that additional card into the hand. Spoiler alert, it is enough. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I did not want to count. <laughs> I thought you were good at math. I just boast about it. I can't actually do it. Uh, same. Fleet Footed draws a card for the turn. Dragonite V to the bench, and there is that Lightning Rondo taking the knockout on that Raichu V. No energy in play for Christian. Two cards in hand, one for the turn. Or one card in hand, actually. Ooh. It is a judge. Lightning Energy and Judge. The issue is, you need to find the generator, like, now. Oh, no. That's no. not good. That's not no. good. Okay. Well, That's, you can't use you, that. You lost all your flapping. <laughs> yeah, you can't even use it or you lose your judge also. That's brutal. Energy card can go on that Raikou V. And if you get another basic Pokemon with tandem unit, you have enough to take the knockout on the opposing Raikou. Yep, that's where I was leaning to. We're going to see the judge. It's going to be up to likely an electric generator either way to get these accelerated after losing that Flappy. One thing that does happen now, though, is you're kind of forced to get two energy now instead of just one by attaching to that ride on EX. Never punished, Jeremy. I mean, you're right. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> or just get two electric generators. And get Fail one on the each. first oh. one, and then get two the second time. All right. A man after my own heart. Give us some drama. Oh. How about nothing? Or a seal stone when you don't have a V-Star. Is it turn one? Can we squawk a villain? <laughs> got to squawk and seize the opportunity. Am I right? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ultra Ball finds him right on EX, but there is nothing going on for Christian this game. And honestly, I think just being forced to attack with the, the Raichu V for a couple turns really put a hamper on the pretty good setup that Christian started out with. Yeah, it, it really worried me to see that as the, the introductory Pokemon of this game. I thought Christian had a, a strategy going into it with that, but it looks like it really just ends up going how I thought. You, you run out of energies, you're taking these knockouts that aren't terribly relevant, and then you don't have the energies on board when the V Pokemon are introduced. And I feel like Jake did a really great job of timing that out. And now we're just going to be looking for boss's orders, Sableye. There's a lot of different ways that you can start to manipulate how prize cards are taken here and completely disrupt what Christian's up to. And honestly, I like what Christian's doing, just taking a look through the discard, taking a look through the Lost Zone, kind of get a sense of what Jake is playing for games two and possibly three. Fleet footed, Free card. card. Free cards a rope. Not the best with the Zero Aura there, but never bad to see. Super Odd's going to shuffle back a couple yeah. energies, most likely. It does five. have a Mirage Gate, a so Moonlight five. Shuriken could, uh... I drove, I drew four off, 
think we're just trying to establish how many cards were in hand. Yeah, four. there was a bench of the Comfe and the Fleet Footed draw, so yeah, I think we're fair. I think what they're missing is the bench of the Comfe. Yeah. Okay, so that I. No, no, no. I, I start. There we go. Hey, good man, Jake. Watch us all just be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's my biggest fear. Yep. It is tough to do three jobs at once, but we try, Jeremy. I mean, I, I try to do one, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, Super Rod is going to do quite a few jobs. Get those resources back into the deck and bring them right back into play with the help of Mirage Gate. Can help do a little bit of thinning as well. It's I mean, there's still choices that need to be made here. You can go for the Radiant Greninja if you want. You can also uh, accelerate saying. onto the Dragonite V if you just want to attack some of these V Pokemon. But, ooh, who doesn't like using Moonlight Shuriken? Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was waiting for that. <laughs> That's called a setup. Yeah, he is pretty set up on the board right now. It's pretty good. Yeah, there's there's not much you can do here on Christian's side. There's a couple of Pokemon that just don't have the hit points to compete. Dragonite is going to be threatening 250 damage Ooh. now. And the bravery, and the bravery charm. charm means this puppy's sticking around for a little while. Take your quick knock out there, get some Mareep, and two prizes left in game one. Listen, this is why we were charging up the Raichu V to take down a Bravery Charm Dragonite V. Jeremy got bad news. <laughs> There's one energy in play. <laughs> one. There's not enough energies in the deck to knock this Pokemon out. No, it has to be all of them. All five <laughs> need to be played <laughs> in order to get the job done. There's I'm worried. Been... I thought you were Kyle. <laughs> There's only been one electric generator played, right? Okay. There's one in hand. Then what? Uh, you poke a stop into him. Okay. Yeah, all yeah. right. It's lined up. Without discarding any other electric energy. Oh, okay. yeah. Yep, electric generator complete whiff. That's tough. Listen, sometimes there's a blackout. It happens. Honestly here, though, I, I do feel like we should be moving in the game, too. Yeah, that's a, a read that you start to look for from Christian on, at, at this point in the game. Of course, you've done Ooh. so much work trying to find the right resources. Ooh. I don't think a switch is going to get the job done. You don't get to keep those. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pokestop's amazing! <laughs> yeah, you, 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 didn't, you didn't shuffle it, but you did kind of like hold it in your hand, yeah. I think giving them just a, a caution, be like, hey, don't, don't put those supporters in your hand, but yeah, we, we knew the three cards, so it's pretty easy to fix that. Now, at this point, 27 minutes on the clock. It's an almost unwinnable situation. Got to start looking at scooping up, going to game two, and making a, a decent uh, game of this here. And there we see it. Christian sees the, the light at the end of the tunnel of uh, game one already being pretty much over with. That was tough. That was, that was pretty tough. It was... A pretty solid setup, honestly, from Christian. I just don't agree with the energy placements. I feel like uh, incorporating that uh, Raikou early on is a, a great way to take them, those prize cards, force your opponent to go for the V strategy, and then once they go for the V strategy, you work in that Raichu. I don't mind attacking with the, uh, the first attack going first, getting that additional energy, but from that point forward, you need to retreat, get those energies in play, and let them hang around for a little while. Yeah, uh, it is definitely something... You have to be cognizant of in a matchup like this where Jake can pretty much do a bunch of different things to try to get these prizes. And you can not even see a V Pokemon for the entire game and still just have to deal with Cramor and Sableye and Radiant Greninja. Yeah, you, you got to look out for those. I think Christian would feel more comfortable with that uh, Bravery Charm in the mix. Maybe uh, have that on a Pokemon like that Maridon or even that Raikou. Then it forces your opponent to have, I guess, Dragonite in that instance for the Raikou, but Maridon would be able to stick around no matter what. Uh, you have that back and forth with the Lost Vacuums. It's, it's tough to say. I think you just have to play aggressively, keep the energies on board, and hope to get the job done. A couple energies for Jake in the prize cards. Meanwhile, Nothing too bad for Christian there. <laughs> having a heart attack over there. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
Christian opted to go second here. Rightfully so, when you see double pedal VIP pass after you let your opponent go first. Oh, brutal. Would you say this is a good start from Jake? It's not a bad start, Jeremy. All right, cool. It's not a bad start. The rest of the hands, not great. Who cares? <laughs> got energies, got Radiant Greninja. <laughs> can even use that nest ball if you want. Thin out even more. Just going to select three Pokemon with the battle, battle VIP. So I think we're holding on to the nest. Holding on to the nest ball, hoping to find a course experiment to continue. Pretty stellar start in the game, or into turn two here. Gonna start things off with concealed cards, though. Get the guaranteed two cards. Boss's orders and Pokestop. Pokestop could be useful because one thing you're missing is those switching effects. And wow, all right, uh, escape rope switch card are the choices. Yeah, I, I do worry. Uh, of course, if you miss the, the switching effect here, then you, you start to consider if you should uh, play that card out. But you don't want to give your opponent free access to potentially finding Nest Ball and getting bailed out. So because of that, we just see the retreat and off this third flower selecting. It's Ooh. Water Energy Sableye. One important thing to note, there's a pretty low count of energies in Jake's deck, only having eight total. Yep, I really like this from, uh, from Jake. Understands Sableye occasionally is worked into the mix to clean up some Pokemon following Cramorant or Radiant Greninja, but Radiant Greninja and that Water Energy, such a sweet combo to have on turn two. You only need that one Mirage Gate to get the job done. Christian, <laughs> poor Christian, <laughs> starting things off there with the Forest Steel Stone. You gotta feel for him, twice in a row now. It's basically a nest ball. No, no, it's a battle VIP pass because it gets the Maridon, <laughs> and then the Maridon gets a couple other Pokemon. I feel very bad for him. <laughs> this is brutal. Brutal, but you got to be able to play the game, and Forest Heal Stone is allowing you to do just that by searching back for any card. Yep, start to wonder if the hand is going to be that bad as well. It's where you have to consider Squawkabilly. It's a Pokemon doesn't really work in a matchup like this. Low hit points, two prize cards, easily knocked out, and can mess with the prize exchanges. But sometimes you just need to find cards. We'll see if that, that matters enough. Looks like it is going to just be that Maridon. <laughs> and Christian did search out the one Nest Ball in the deck to get that Maridon EX. We were talking about it earlier where grabbing that Nest Ball thins out your deck for later on. Could be an option here. Maridon does grab basically every Pokemon except Squawkabilly. But if you're kind of hoping for a Squawkabilly. Yeah, yeah no, that's a, that's a good point to make as well. It's, if this is a turn where potentially you have to go find Raikou and promote that Pokemon to the active spot, fleet-footed for one, it's, maybe Nest Ball would help. Now, this is one thing I really love doing whenever I'm playing Maridon EX is tandem unit for another Maridon. It doesn't say you can only use one tandem unit a turn. So that second ride on EX able to search out two more lightning Pokemon. Now we have a full bench. It's basically like using double battle VIP pass Nest Ball. It looks really good, but <laughs> losing the access to the Forest Seal Stone and not having a supporter for the turn is not as great. Oh, there's no supporter either? I thought I'm was, not sure. I thought there was a judge. Okay, well, we'll see what the rest of the hand has. So this is just the one energy and the... I guess there is the electric generator. Okay. Oh, it's a maybe, boss's orders. Maybe this could turn... It's Iona. Iona. Oh. Fancy. Listen, I'm, I'm too poor. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days, Jeremy. <laughs> electric we'll, generator. We'll get you one of those top 32s those kids are talking about. Maybe. Oh, yeah. All right. Already looking a lot better. Two energy going anywhere you want. Ryko V is the recipient of the first one. And the second? Okay, good. <laughs> Look at that. Christian's already taking notes. So, so, uh, all right, uh, that, that Raichu thing, uh, that didn't work out. Let's, let's, let's keep energies on board and see if we can uh, make knockouts happen that way. And as it stands with Zeror in the active spot with that free retreat, Christian does have the knockout on the Kumfei. Woo! Bravery charm to go along with it. It's pretty good. Yeah, this is this is what I was uh, hinting at earlier on. Just having the bravery charm may just be what puts this over the edge for Christian. Feeling confident, promoting this Pokemon, not worried about being knocked out, unless of course it is the Dragonite, but you're asking so much of your opponent. 
energy for turn goes down on that right to V, and we're going to see a fleet footed before any of the supporters. Hey, there's your judge. There's judge. All right. You called it, man. Look at you. Where's my crystal ball? Put it here somewhere. <laughs> Christian's definitely going to consider it. You got a boss's orders, too. Boss's orders up the Radiant Greninja. Keep that Mareep safe. Yeah, I, I do not dislike that. Also, judging away this hand and knocking out a Comfey, probably going to be a pretty solid strategy as well. Your opponent only has three cards in the Lost Zone. If they are reliant on those two Comfeys to get the job done in combination with the Radiant Greninja, Probably means that a path to the peak would do a lot of work here to slow that down and maybe avoid scene seven in the loss zone. Either way, I think that boss's orders or judge would have been the better supporter over the Iono, giving your opponent a full six cards to work with. Well, we found the Dust Stadium. Not it's the wrong the one. right one. It is the Stormy Mountains. That does not do nearly enough to oppress Radiant Greninjas. One card that oppresses a lot of other cards. Colors' experiment found off that judge for Jake here. And now you get a look at the top five. Put three in your hand, and then put the other two in the loss zone. Looks like Boss's orders. Escape rope might be the cards of choice. I already have an escape rope in hand. You do lose that Boss's orders though, which could come in handy later on. You just play that one copy. Yeah, this is a really tough call. There's a lot of resources that could be beneficial in this situation. Escape Rope does make a lot of sense. Leads to the seventh card in the Lost Zone with the Comfey. If you don't already have the switching effect. Boss's Orders might not be as relevant. Uh, getting the damage down. Say, for instance, even we saw Raikou attack in, deal 200 damage. You could always Lost Vacuum, remove that Bravery Charm, take a knockout, and have like a double or triple knockout turn. So... Situations are always going to be there for Jake to clean these Pokemon up. Good way to play around Iono for later on in the game. Flower selecting grabs a four seal stone off the top, gets rid of that water energy, and that's going to go pretty well with the nest ball that Jake decided to keep off that course experiment. Also has the Raikou V in hand. Spin the stop. Not, Not too bad of a find. Discard that second Colorus' experiment for the Pal Pad. You got that Lost Vacuum to get rid of the Pokestop or the Bravery Charm, like you were saying. Yep, this lines up fairly well. We see Raikou already ready to go. Five Pokemon on the bench, so uh, dealing 200 damage only requires that Comfe or Nest Ball to be played here, and we are going to see that. So Knockout already lined up as soon as we see one more card in the Lost Zone. I think that's going to be coming pretty soon. You do have Mirage Gate in hand, that Lost Vacuum. So the Lost Vacuum is going to guarantee that seventh card at least. You need it to get rid of that Bravery Charm. And I guess we'll see what uh, this Four Seal Zone might also decide to grab. Yeah, at this point, the only thing you're missing is the switching effects. You'll already have the seven cards in the Lost Zone after using the Lost Vacuum on the Bravery Charm, so... Maybe searching out that switch cart. Or, I mean, you could even grab an energy for retreating at this point. Star Alchemy is used. I'm going to see a card grabbed from Jake's deck. And there's the switch cart. That is going to allow this Ryko V to go to the active spot. You get Fleet Footed. You get Mirage Gate. Now I guess the one decision to make left is what card do you remove with Lost Vacuum? I, I think I want to get rid of that Bravery Charm, man. No, I meant from your hand. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, that's a little different. There's a lot of good cards here. I do want to make note. There's, it looks like only two card, two energies were found off of that, and uh, with the retreat, you could like easily just remove. Happen. You put that water energy right back into the deck, save a switch card for future turns. So... Don't know if I agree with that just yet. That this does lead to potentially uh, the Raikou V drawing a fleet-footed energy, but I don't think we're concerned about those energy attachments at this point. Lightning energy and a psychic energy found off the Mirage Gate. Raikou V going to have a little uh, friendly fire here, taking down the, the beautiful art from uh, what? 
Are we at six? We're at six right now. Lost vacuum. Yeah, seven. but we just oh, we just yeah it, it was it, it was misordered. All right. Hopefully everybody's yeah. fine with that. I <laughs> little bit awkward to see the uh, the sequencing there, but I think I think we are okay and ready to go. Fleet footed. Now the draw. And yeah, as long as fleet footed didn't come yes. first. <laughs> yeah, we could not have that. Yeah, I think they realized it just now. Did I? Okay. I didn't, it didn't like affect because I didn't go in my check again. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I yeah, it's, it, it's tricky to say what's correct in this okay. spot because obviously you're not supposed to do it in that order. There were already deck I mean, surges I did, that I mean, happened that turn, anyways. so seeing the energies is information that I guess you technically already had, but you're, you're not supposed to have at that point in time, which is a little bit awkward. I think we're going to... I was at six, but I, I literally had everything else in hand, it, so it's not like I... I mean, I did go out of sequence, but it didn't change the outcome yep. of what it Yeah, we're getting a little bit of the, the table information here. Yeah, and you know. Jake's saying pretty similar to I was always what I'm noting. Yeah, I, yeah. It was missequenced, yeah, right, right. Yeah. but I think he already had deck access, so it's not like it changed anything as far as information. So let's see what the judge thinks the, about that. The one decision that could have changed was what you target with the loss vacuum the bravery charm and Jake saying yeah I was always going to go for that bravery charm but there's, there's no real way to prove that yeah <laughs> so I, I definitely understand the judge uh, trying to get this ruling right as it's, uh, it's unfortunate to see the missequence there Jake obviously knew exactly what he was going for that whole time but just got to make sure that you put the cards down in the right order now I do want to mention uh, it does seem like Jake goes to league a lot Oh, yeah. Does he have a lot of those prize packs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Flex on him. <laughs> I, I think we saw the uh, the, the non-foil uh, forest seal stones yeah. in there, too. That's uh, that's something I need to pick up. Those guys warp bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was running into that a lot with uh, with Turbo Lost Box, and it's, it's, not, it's not cool when you can absolutely tell what your top deck is. <laughs> you ever had the... Judge proxy of the energy. Oh, just them? the energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've seen it. I, I, I have not been dealt it yet. So, thankfully, I've avoided that. But that's those, why you those, play those the are... uh, the non foils if you can. It's, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, I'm they're a cool. non foil person all the time. Hopefully, this one is a pretty easy resolution. Granted, there is a possibility that it could be a double prize penalty. Yeah, no, it, 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 understandable. It looks like Jake is reasonably upset that this is continuing. It's, it is going to be one of those mental errors that you just have to chalk up to. You're playing a lot of Pokemon today. You're trying to get the job done. you got the lights on you, and sometimes you're not going to sequence those things in the right order. Yeah. Also, you're playing one of the hardest decks in the format. Uh, you have to sequence things right pretty much every turn if you want to do well and try to win a tournament with a deck like Lhasa. Now, if this was maybe a, a locals, like a cup or something like that, it'll be kind of a lower penalty because there's less on the line, a little right. more, less competitive environment. Yeah, we do have that uh, I guess tier. It's like a tier setting yeah. of, of the tournament level. Regionals are going to be one of those highest level events that we play in, so got to be looking out for that and make sure that integrity of the game is uh, going to be one of those focal points as we have a lot of judges trying to do their best out there and make sure that game's being played as intended. Both players sitting patiently and of course they're going to get all this time added back onto the clock so when you see it go from like 10 minutes to 16 that's what's going to happen. All right well say you're Christian. You're sitting there watching potentially a double prize penalty get dealt to you. Are you thinking about that? Are you thinking about next turn? What's going on in your mind? Uh, I'm thinking I need to find electric generators <laughs> and get some energies in play because the two off this Raikko are going down, and then your last one in play is stuck on that right to be. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, is, is two prizes enough? Do we need a few more? Because uh, e even at that rate, it's, it's still a... Upward climb, Jake had a fantastic setup there. Oh, yeah. In order to take the knockout on a Bravery Charm, Raikou V on turn two. 
That's that's everything that you're looking for there. And you're gonna need some help. The electric generator is usually the the key piece to get that done. I feel like they just get infinitely worse as the game progresses. What? No, taking energy out of your deck to try to hit more energy. There's in that. Your deck? There's that math for you one more time. <laughs> it's all about the percentage. Where's your Where's your super rod? <laughs> Shuffle them back in. Try, try to make it work. At least players did that back in the day with like max elixir and stuff yeah. to try to help themselves out. With this, it's just eh, if I find it, I win. <laughs> Looks like they are getting the ruling for them now. Yep. Right. Mr. Ducklet himself, John Orgel, fantastic right. judge. Fantastic nails. Mm -hmm. So it looks like yeah. plays continue. We'll get a confirmation on the actual ruling. Or this is the replay. Yeah, we can take a look at what happened here. And this yeah. is with right, six right. cards in the lost zone. Okay. Saw those targeted early on. Before you're allowed to. One, two, three, four, five, six cards right here. Yeah, you can't work. You can't do very much with that. And you got to play that lost vacuum first. And we'll see if that has any consequences to follow. And I, I, I do think it's probably going to end up being a double prize. It's a long explanation. <laughs> long ex explanation, but you also you can look through the deck, see, okay, I have these switch outs left. I'm going to get rid of this escape rope. All right, looks like we're ready to jump back in. Thank you. Knockout. Try not to do that again. Ryko on Ryko. Two prize cards for Jake. And we will see if we can get word from the judge on that official ruling there. Let's see if we have that two prize penalty or not. I don't know. I heard Jake say thank you. So maybe not. Maybe it's just a warning. You're able to. Yeah, you're warning. You're able to reverse it enough. You had all the knowledge available. And yeah. I, that's it's good that, to see. That's one thing that definitely saved Jake was the way that the turn played out. At least he had already had a deck search to see those energies. He didn't get additional information before doing that. So looks like we were able to find a resolution that's pretty fitting. See how much time is also added to the clock here as we're still in game two. Looks like about four minutes added. I'll take it. I'm sure they will, too. Uh, Christian maybe wanted a little more time to try to win <laughs> this was, game and then win next game. <laughs> that was like 20, right? <laughs> <laughs> like 50 minutes, right? Like it, This is best of 375. There we go. Oh, Zorora in the active, mainly there just for that free retreat. It's going to have to be some help here from Electric Generator, Flaffy also. Just a few ways to get energies back into play. I don't know if the hand is going to help. Second Raichu V coming down for Christian there. Energy from the hand to the Raichu V. That already had that energy and still just needs to poke a stop into the yeah, generator. I, the Christian was going to counter the stadium and then said, wait, I need to try to get the bailout button generator here. And misses and misses a Flaffy once more, but at least finds Ultra Ball to find the second one. That's still one energy short. I think there's a professor's research in hand still, so. Could at least keep going, digging. Yeah, it's a good, good card. At this point, you need to continue to burn through, find those resources. You have to do it pretty quickly. You're already down uh, one to zero here. Your opponent had a very great opener, and it's likely that they're going to continue to find prize cards at this point. You have to take this knockout here if you want to stay in the game. Dynamotor 4, Christian, allows him to attach a lightning from the discard to one of your bench Pokemon. And then counter the stadium with that Stormy Mountain. Oh, is it here? If it is, this is a big missequence on just using Flaffy. I don't like that. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but I hate it. <laughs> Either way, seven cards drawn. Looking for that generator to help out. There's one, but three energies found. Uh, that's not what you want to do, is draw those energies along with that electric generator. At least there's the Ultra Ball to take one more card out of the deck. Nope, <laughs> we'll just use the generator. <laughs> right. 
Five need cards to? off the top. Two lightning needed, and oh. how about none? There we go. Oh my gosh. Just needed. Or just <laughs> one. Yeah. You're making it's me nervous. Part of the part of the mind game. Yeah. I mean, if there is a Pokemon in the deck, Listen, you are supposed to pull that Pokemon out and help your odds. I, I just know that hitting two off generator is what you need every time. Okay, so. fair. <laughs> Have I attached the turn? Um, Have attached an energy yes. for the turn already to let Raichu. I believe so. Generator and a dynamo. Yep. We have no. already seen all the energies. There yeah. was an attachment on to the Raichu. Flappy was, was used before the professor's time. research for reasons unknown. But, uh, it's it's going to be a missed knockout here. Yeah, I guess with the boss's orders gone, you don't have to worry too much about Jake bringing up that Raichu taking a knockout. There's also three escape rope in the loss zone. So the Zeror seems kind of safe to just leave in the active spot, try to buy yourself a couple more turns, but Jake is in full control of this game so far. Yeah, with seven cards in the loss zone, just the potential to have a, a big turn here using Mirage Gate like <laughs> from Jake likely means that prize cards will be uh, falling here. If you can knock out that Flaffy, if it's either going to be with the Radiant Greninja or save a if you're able to get to the 10 cards in the loss zone. It's going to be a pretty strong spot to be in. Christian with a tough call of what Pokemon do you even want in the access spot in this situation? Is it worth just holding on and waiting? You see the boss's orders in the loss zone, so likely you will get to hold on to the energies on this Raichu. Don't have to cash in yet. But what are you retreating to? The Raichu? We're cashing in. Yeah. All right. Well, 180 damage, thanks to that dynamic spark on the Raikou okay. V. But Jake just has knockout already in play, thanks to that Raikou V and that Lightning Rondo. Enough bench Pokemon to go along with it. Now you just need to set up for next turn. Maybe get an energy on the Dragonite. All right, I wanted to see Stormy Mountains for Dragonite. <laughs> <laughs> It still can happen. You fail the nest ball and storm, <laughs> yeah. storm your mountain. Uh, Got to look out for all the reads there. But at, no, at this point, this is a very similar situation to game one. You already have that big attacker lined up. You Aww. set up the secondary attacker in that Dragonite V. And you should have access to taking whatever knockouts you're going to need here to close things out. Christian can't really do much in this position with the single price Pokemon. I guess you could attack with that Zero Aura to knock out this Raikou V. Listen, I, I like want to believe in that moment where Jake just paused, shuffling the deck, like, oh, I should have Stormy oh, Mountains for this. Mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Polish's experiment, going to get rid of two cards to the Lost Zone. Looks like that Rapion and Comfey, maybe? Yeah, it looks like it. Who needs him? At this point, as long as it's not named Sableye, go away. <laughs> Water energy on the Dragonite V. And there's not much else you need to do, even if Christian does take the two prizes on the Raikou with the Zeraora. Jake can answer back with a Roxanne. Yep, it does line up very nicely. And you think about what Christian has left in a situation like this, attaching to a Zero Aura, taking a knockout on this Pokemon. It's, you're not going to have the energies that you're going to need to knock out a Pokemon like that Dragonite down the road. So still a lot of cards left to be found here on this turn. There we see Dynamotor on the Raichu V. Energy from the hand to that Zero Aura. So Christian will have a knockout this turn, but it's... Still down in the prize trade. Five to two, and it's not looking good. Takes a look with the Moradon tandem unit to see if there is an additional Pokemon you want to add to the board. I think it's just Mareep at this stage, and that's dangerous. <laughs> Radiant Greninja would say nom 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 to that. <laughs> Honestly, with the Echoing Horn, too, we could just see the game finish up next turn with a Moonlight Shuriken. Yeah, that's a very important card to look out for. 
Judge is going to be the play here from Christian, so Jake will see a few more cards. Of course, access to plenty of those come phase down the road, too. Both players drawn four cards off the top of their deck. A couple energy found along with the electric generator. Odds on this hitting? Zero. Okay, good. No. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> I worry every time I see multiple energies in the hand, it's just like, okay, I'm just not destined to draw the right part of the deck. Speaking of multiple energies in the hand, Jake has a water and a lightning to go along with the Mirage Gate. Now, if there's enough water left in the deck, Moonlight Shuriken is available for him here. Zeror, Battle Claw, taking the knockout. Don't see it too often. Unless it's a Curlia. <laughs> Fourth escape rope found for Jake here. Does have access to flower selecting and concealed cards. Perfect draw here would be Super Odd and uh, Echoing Horn to seal up the game. He's the poor seal stone, but Easter already used this game. It's not exactly what you're looking for here, and some switching effects would be pretty nice to find. Only a couple switch cart left, though, along with that escape rope. You see the rope there. there. Was that turn earlier where he had access hey. to Hey, Stormy Mountains is being used. <laughs> it's not going to find save live, but it is nice to say hi. Taking a look through the deck, though, <laughs> gaining valuable knowledge. Echoing Horn is still in there. There's no energy. There's one psychic energy. A couple super rod, though. So this is the goal. You need to find those rods so you can actually uh, use this Mirage Gate this turn. Yeah, pretty unfortunate to find the lightning and the water energy here. And even just finding one of those would have led to potentially Dragonite attacking this turn, even if it is going to be for a silly knockout on a Zerora. Sableye is going to be targeted down. Mirage Gate could find that Psychic Energy. And with Escape Rope and a Retreat, you could target down, okay. knocking I'm out gonna, that I'm Flaffy. Gonna, I'm going to conceal cards first. So I think we're seeing here, grab that Sableye. We're going to conceal cards to try to find that Super Rod if possible. As long as you don't draw the Psychic Energy. That is true. Because well, that All could right. lead to some awkwardness with the 10th. Oh, the 10th card's already in the loss zone. You're fine. Echoing Horn, Super Rod. I think that was the two cards needed to seal up this game. Is there a Mareep in the discard? I don't. I think it's still in the deck. Well, if that's the case, it's not game. <laughs> it's going to be the Super Rod first. Of course, regardless, you want to get those energies shuffled back in before you start to accelerate. But got to take a look at that discard pile, right? <laughs> see, what, see what Christian's working with over there. Maybe there is uh, a Pokemon that you would like to target down. Three if it is Mareep, uh, that's going to be GG. Well, I guess you'd still need the water. True. Did discard the water with the concealed cards here. So it's just a couple turns of Sableye, I guess. Already down one in the loss zone. Looks like Psychic Energy Water were the targets for Mirage Gate. Water on that active come phase, so you can retreat, it seems like. Um, yep, I think in this situation, that, that using the there. escape rope uh, does make a good amount of sense. You could just have all the energies charged onto that Dragonite V and have a checkmate situation built in with that Sableye knocking out the Flaffy. It would always knock out the Zeror, and if not any other Pokemon, it's knocked out by that Dragonite V. Instead, the energy is not already lined up there. You're only dealing 50 if the Sableye is knocked out. It's a little bit of a risk. A little bit risky, but Jake is so far ahead right now to where think it's going to matter too, too much. But here we see Lost Mine taking out the Flaffy. And three on the right, it seems like. One card left in the prizes for Jake. And 
a grip of three energy bosses orders and a couple of Pokemon for Christian. That's not going to do anything. It's so tough. Not even a knockout lined up unless you use the Raichu V. If you use the Raichu V, then you're losing all of your energies in play. Obviously, could knock out that Dragonite V, but sure. you're not going to win the game. Sableye's lined up to easily knock out that Zeraora. Retreat to the Raikou. Stormy Mountain's going to thin the deck, grab a Marie. You already lose to Sableye, might as well. Can't double lose, right? A little thinning here. Technically, line up for the fleet footed. You could technically double lose. Well, yeah, Christian lost first game. He's going to oh, lose, <laughs> lose this game too, right? Okay, that was kind of funny because the bravery charm was found. And that oh, no. could have yeah, saved. It would have, it would have protected the zero. Yeah. Well, that is awkward. But I, I think there's no way to retreat again. Yeah. So There's probably a lost vacuum floating around on the other side. I think Christian yeah, yeah. sees the writing on the wall. There is the concession handshake, and Jake Abrams punching his ticket into day two, 6-0-1 with this turbo loss box. Yeah, yeah representing for Pittsburgh here, here the first regional like of the year, down. and very strong showing to, to get the job done against a Maridon player here. And it's, it's not guaranteed in a matchup like this. There's so much that needs to go right. You need to get the damage on board and try to work in those knockouts. And Boy, what a turn. And game yeah. two, turn two, to remove that bravery yeah, charm and take the knockout uh, with your own Raikou V. Unreal. Uh, pretty crazy how it ended up and the fact that Jake just missequenced it a little bit made it even more of a, a thing than it should have been, too. Oh, man. Hey, I mean, that's, uh, that's why you play the game, right? It's always uh, exciting for us to see how both these players go about the matchup, play it in their own way, and... And, I, and okay. we end up seeing Jake Abrams moving on to 6 0 oh, 1. Two more opportunities today to add some additional points. I'm doing it with a deck that you. you were saying there's no free win in this matchup. But I don't think there's a free win at all if you're playing Lost Zone. Uh, it is a grind every game to try to figure out what you need to do and how to do it. Yep, see the. Intense energy on both players' faces, trying to get the job done here. Game number one, targeting down with that Radiant Greninja, removing the Flaffy, and a lot of the energies that Christian was looking for throughout the match did not have the resources to, to take the big knockouts at the end of the game. Yeah, game one, it seemed like Christian just really did not want to attack with Raikou early, and game two, Chose to go with the Raikou early, but Jake just had everything possible to really take it down here. Game one, it was just pretty much over once the, the energies kept going off with the Raichu's dynamic spark. Yep, jumped into game number two here with about half the time left on the clock and got to feel comfortable as Jake. When you start off with the double battle VIP pass in this game, take a huge knockout here after a little bit of a hiccup. <laughs> and uh, Raikou V does fall and the resources just weren't really falling there for Christian after this knockout. Of course, had the Raichu, but Electric Generator, a little bit of missequencing left and right, and just didn't line up to take the big knockouts when needed. It's what this deck does. Once you get those certain numbers in the loss zone each turn, 7 and 10 are going to be the very important ones, especially with this variant of the list. Opens a lot of resources available to you. Mirage Gate and Sableye are two of the most powerful cards we have in this format. And we see there the Zerora actually sneaking in, taking the knockout to clean up what Raichu could not. Gets Christian down to three prize cards. But the work was not over yet for Jake. Had that Sableye lined up to remove the Flaffy, get some damage down onto that Raichu. And there was, there was enough to get the job done against that Dragonite, but that doesn't take three prize cards. And that means that Jake Abrams is moving on, 6-0-1. Oh, 
Still plenty of tournament left for both of these players. Jake already in day two, but like you said, trying to pad those match points a little bit to have an easier time to make that top eight. Hopefully win this tournament, win an invite. Hey, do it for Pittsburgh. Do it for Pittsburgh. <laughs> there you go. That, that'd be quite a great story to follow. Of course, 1,700 other players trying to do just that for whatever reasons they have as they play the Pokemon TCG. And, and we're going to be looking to follow all those stories as we move on throughout the day. Two more rounds still to go here. It's going to be some pretty close action as we're trying to see who's making it into day two, who's going to have their potential to take the first $10,000 check. Yes, please. All the money. And of course, that goes all the way down to top 32, even getting $1,000. It's, it's crazy, to say the least. Sign me up. <laughs> well, there's a well, people are trying. There's a lot of people trying to sign up for these tournaments. That's yeah, true. Yep, uh, that's that's half the battle, yep. honestly. And uh, I think that just goes to show uh, where Pokemon is trajected at this point. We are continuing to see more and more players, more viewers as well watching, and it's just great to see the growth of this game. And so many people behind the stage trying to get uh, the perfect show presented for everyone here. And um, we're, we're very uh, appreciative to be a part of this. Oh, 100%. And be sure to use that hashtag, play Pokemon. Tell us how much you're enjoying it, you know? It's uh, not just an event that's happening here in Pittsburgh. It involves all of you at home as well. And, and I mean, we already gave you, what, like seven dad puns <laughs> throughout that game. If you like those, stay tuned for this guy a little more. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, we were talking about Jake winning this round, punching the ticket into day two. 